It's August, and that means hockey season is right around the corner. What's up guys, it's your Bud Bolt, and I'm here today with some very important information. Today we're talking about hockey equipment. What do I need? And where do I buy it new? And how much is it going to cost me? And this is just the beginning. This is the first of a whole series of videos about hockey, about beginner starting and what you need to know. There's going to be a boatload of information that's going to be coming your way. Now, I've been playing since I was eight. And every season that I don't get to play, my heart just breaks a little and I never get that piece back. Keep in mind that I live in Canada, so this is all going to be specific to Canadians. But if you live somewhere else, you can just do the research, just Google all the pieces of equipment, and you can find where you can buy that equipment where you're located. This information can be used for anyone who's new to the game, whether you're 80 or whether you're 8, whether you're a parent or whether you're the one playing. It's absolutely never too late to start playing. I mean, in my last league, we had people in their 70s. And the league before that, we even had somebody who was 90. And the lovely thing about this game is once we hit the ice, nothing else matters. All your problems go away. And if you're playing in a good league, usually a rec league with folks who are there for fun, nobody cares what your skill level's at. We're all just there to skate and have a good time. Since I grew up playing women's hockey, and I still play women's hockey to this day, that's where my knowledge is, so just keep that in mind. Not a whole lot is going to be different, but it's a bonus if you're a woman in the game. So like I mentioned, this is the very first video in this series and it is a beast and I'm going to say that over and over because it's so long. So I don't blame you if you need to pause and walk away or come back to this. And going from here on out, we're going to talk about the best place I think to buy gear in person. Um, I'm going to teach you how to put that gear on. We're going to go over taping your stick, baking your skates. Uh, how to wash your gear and uh, maintain it. Then we're going to also go over what you need to know as far as hockey culture goes in your first game. And we're eventually going to be going over positioning. Basic positioning, where to stand for face-offs, what to do here, what to do there, what the heck is a breakout. But for this video, we are focusing on hockey gear. And you might have a figure in your head for how much hockey gear is. I mean, everyone knows it's expensive, but do you know how expensive? It could be cheaper than you think. And I do want to say that if you buy used gear, which I highly recommend if you're just starting out, it's going to be so much cheaper than this. I'm going to be talking about low-end new gear today, but used gear is just, it's such a good deal. Sometimes your local shops, your local used sporting goods shop, will even let you trade in other sporting goods for some of their used sporting goods, which means you might end up getting equipment for free. And if that's not the case, Kijiji and Facebook Marketplace are full of people who grew out of their gear, who started and didn't like it, who got too busy and couldn't play anymore, who, you know, got injured and can't play anymore. So check those spots for stuff. I do need to caution you about buying two things used though. The first thing is a helmet. Helmets are kind of like a one-time use steal. Once they've had one major collision, they need to be discarded and replaced. And sometimes you can't even see the damage. Sometimes there's micro fractures within the plastic that weakens it. So do yourself a favor, protect your head, and buy a new helmet. The second thing to caution you away from buying used is skates. Now, it's not the worst thing to buy used. It's not as bad as buying a used helmet. But skates, there's two ways to break them in to mold your foot. The first one is baking. We can control that. When you buy new skates, you do want to bake them to fit your foot. When you buy used skates, you can still bake them to fit your foot. But then the second way to break them in is by breaking them in, which means you wear them until they slowly mold to the shape of your foot. If you're buying used skates, this process is very, very difficult, sometimes impossible to undo which means that it's already molded to someone else's foot by baking and by breaking in. So you can bake it and try and break it in, but more than likely it's not going to fit as comfortably. So most people here use hockey gear and it's like, oh God, why would you do that to yourself? It's disgusting. But I'm here to tell you there's two ways you can get rid of the hockey funk. 
The first one is simple and cheap. You can just wash it in your home washing machine. Almost everything can go in there with just laundry detergent. And if you're like me, you toss in some of those little scent boosting beads in there. The second way is you bring it into a hockey shop and they actually have a machine called an Ozonator or a fresh gear machine. All the gear, including the bag goes in and it's sanitized by Ozonation. But if you do want to buy new gear and you don't want to venture into the world of the used stuff, I do want to say July, unfortunately it's already passed is the best month to buy gear. Middle of the summer, everything is on clearance. People are clearing their shelves. Even people who uh, have been playing in their gear and want to upgrade usually sell in July because that's when they realize hockey season is coming and the last one has ended. And to start, you don't need pro gear. I mean, by all means, get it if you want it. But if you're a beginner player playing rec hockey, you do not need all of the extra padding and you don't have to spend the extra money. With that being said, something that I found just from personal experience is if you go to Sport Check, and so far Sport Check's the only one that's done it for me, go to Sport Check and just find whoever's working in the hockey department and ask if they have any lower grade things in the back. Normally, apparently, they keep all of their high end equipment in the front and then the lower end stuff in the back. The last time I did this was completely by random happenstance. I was looking for a new pair of pants. The ones on the floor were like $90. I tried them on and I, it was like wearing a suit of armor. I just, I was playing rack hockey. I don't need that much padding. And so I approached the guy and asked, and that's where he said, oh yeah, we keep all the cheaper stuff in the back. Let me go look for you. And guys, he came out with a pair of pants that were $5, $5 and they fit me perfectly. There's a dad there with his two little kids and he asked if there's anything in the back that would fit them. And the guy came out with shin pads and elbow pads for both kids. So pop into a sport check. Ask them. Talk to somebody. They might be able to help you out. So for the purposes of this video, I will be showing you how much and what you need for a full set of gear, including a bunch of optional items. And to do this, I did all of my research online at major Canadian retailers. Now keep in mind, none of these folks were sponsored. I did not use items on clearance. I did not use items on sale. And I picked items with a wide variety of sizes so that more than likely they were there when you went and followed the links. I also only went for items in senior sizes and I went for items that were women focused. Now when it comes to women's hockey equipment, uh, there are some, you know, things you need like the pelvic protector is going to look different from a quote unquote men's pelvic protector, but for the most part, things are the same. I do want to say that if you want to pick out sizing for anything you're buying online, your best bet is to go to the manufacturer's website and follow their sizing guides. So if the shin pads from Sport Check are CCM, go to CCM and see what their sizing guide is for their shin pads. You might find out you fit in a kid's shin pad, which is awesome because those are cheaper. But if you're somebody who wants to go in the store and try things on, I will be letting you know at the end of the video which retailer popped up the most throughout this list. Also coming at the end is the final price for the absolutely necessary gear, the optional items, and all of it, the grand total. And it might be way more or way less than you think. So let's dive right in. So we're gonna start with under things, and this is anything you're wearing under your gear. There's a bunch of different combinations for this, but the basics are that you need to be wearing something or not on your top and on your bottom. You need a pelvic protector, a way to keep your socks up, and more than likely you're going to need a neck guard. Like I mentioned, there's a bunch of combos, so we're going to run through them quickly here. Now the easiest thing to do for something to wear is just to wear a t-shirt that you already have at home and a pair of pants. I grew up wearing just my pajama pants and a t-shirt underneath my gear. I did that until I was about 20. And at 20, I went out and got some compression gear and that served me quite well. But really, it doesn't, you don't have to spend money on it. You can just really go with what you've already got. I also know a lot of people who just wear their underwear under all of their gear. So like a sports bra and underwear. Um, and some people I know do go naked. So once again, completely uh, up to whatever your comfort level is at. I do want to say that I, I prefer having a compression top and bottom that are both full length so that it creates like a full barrier between my skin and the equipment. 
I have known some people to get rashes from wearing nothing between their skin and their equipment. It also helps wick the sweat away from your body and creates just a really nice barrier. So this compression top for $39.99 from Sport Check is one of the best deals that I found. And when you pair this with a compression bottom, um, with or without gel, it's going to give you that nice barrier. You can wash it after every use. And that way it'll keep your equipment a bit fresher. The nice stuff with this stuff is that it dries so fast. So if you're playing in tournaments, if people are wearing t-shirts, that t-shirt is going to be soaked. So you're going to play a game in the morning, game in the night, maybe three games a day. That shirt and those pants they're wearing, the cotton will be soaked. Cotton absorbs moisture and holds it. So if you really want something that's going to dry quickly, this stuff, literally you take it out. I usually put it in the car because sometimes we don't even leave the rink. So I just put it somewhere in the car to to air out and uh, it's it's almost completely dry by the time the next game happens. Now finding just plain pants that it were compression with no gel in them was actually pretty difficult. Uh, and I think that if you're going to go for a compression pant, you might as well just get one with the gel included. Um, it's not that much more expensive, but 40 bucks without the gel is, is about the price you can expect to spend. And these ones are $36.98 from National Sports. They are marked down, so I don't know what their original price was, and they have no smalls left, as you can see. But the rest of the sizes were there. And uh, so if you're looking for just a plain pant, you can also go with a yoga pant. Those would work great, or some kind of leggings um, would all work completely fine. So we're moving on to pelvic protector and a way to keep up your socks. And this first combo is old school. It's the one that I wore for the first, I think, three years of my hockey career so from the ages of like 8 to 11 um and it'll work just fine it is fairly difficult to find um and it is not the cheapest believe it or not but if you do like this system or say you already have half of the system some people who play baseball might already have a pelvic protector uh pro hockey life does sell pelvic protectors for 12.99 and then you can pick up the garter belt from hockey monkey um for 9.99 so that total is like, what, $22 total? $23? Um, you know, it, it's not expensive, but this garter, let me tell you, my grandmother had to teach me how to put this thing on because I had no clue. Now the easiest and the cheapest method that I have found for this system of pelvic protector, keep your socks up, is this mesh jill short from national sports these are $19.99 and from here on everything is going to be a combo of an article of clothing a pelvic protector and socks so these have velcro flaps on them that you open you stick your socks to and it keeps them up as opposed to the garter belt system if you don't like the idea of a mesh short they do have a compression short so that mesh is going to move it's not going to sit tight on your body um, sometimes the mesh, people don't like the feel of it. So these compression shorts, $49.99 Canadian Tire, are going to fix those problems for you. And here it is, my choice, my top choice for this system is the Compression Jill Full Length Pant. These are $59.99 from Sport Check. And like I said, these are going to give you that nice barrier between your body and your equipment. They're going to keep your socks up and there's a pouch for your cup. The last thing you're going to need as far as under things go is a neck guard. And uh, they make these thicker neck guards like the one on the screen right now. They're not my favorite. I have a really thin one that's just a nice thin Kevlar. And the, the neck guard protects your carotid artery from getting slashed by skates. It's his main function. Um, but this one, $11.99, if you're starting out, getting an old school one, it, it, it's no issue whatsoever. The Kevlar ones are really hard to find nowadays. Um, but this one, this one will work fine. So if you, if you want to start cheap, this is a great way to start cheap. The one way I was able to find the thin neck guard was in, in a piece attached to a compression shirt. Um, these are an option. They've got it at almost every hockey store, but $69.99 sport check, uh, for this compression top with the neck guard built in. This is Bauer's line and Bauer is the most prominent, um, manufacturer of these and this line is called neck protect so if you're looking for these anywhere just look for the neck protect line 
and you'll more than likely find them. They have like a men's and a women's, you know, in quotation marks. It doesn't really matter. They do the same thing. Um, but $69.99 at Sportcheck, and uh, this will combine two pieces into one. Now, this is another option. Full bodysuit, everything in it. Everything mentioned before this is all found in this wetsuit-like <laughs> jumpsuit made for hockey. $119.99 from Hockey Monkey. Um, the only problem is I could only find this with a jock, which if your genitals look, they look like that, that's fantastic. Um, but you will have to purchase an additional Jill cup if you would like to wear this as uh, somebody who needs a Jill. So you can buy this 100%. The, you know, the, the Jill isn't that much more expensive, but this is going to have the neck guard. It's compression top and bottom. There's a uh, cup pocket in there. It does come with a jock. And it does also have the Velcro garter system to hold your socks up. So literally, hop in the suit, do it up, and you're done. Like I mentioned, the, you're going to need a Jill insert if you want the bodysuit with a Jill. Um, they're $8.28, which is fairly cheap on Amazon. Um, and this is Amazon.ca. And it's, it's kind of good to have one around. Because even in the other systems, if you lose your cup, which you have to take the cup out every time you wash it. Um, if you lose the cup, it's nice to have a spare or it's nice to know you can easily get a spare. So if you are looking to get the bodysuit or if you do lose a cup, here's a great option for you. So for the purposes of this video, we're going with the cheapest new option available. And once again, that was these mesh Jill shorts from National Sports at $19.99. Um, so that's going to be in the spreadsheet and figured into the final total when it comes to under things. Um, so the final total will not have compression top or bottoms in it. Um, it'll be assumed that you'll be wearing something from home since it's the cheapest option. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the top and the bottom will be added on to the final total. So we're going to start out with what I wear under my stuff, my under things. So this is my long pant compression Jill Garter combo that I've been wearing uh, for 10 years, I want to say. Uh, it's got a cup insert. Uh, I choose not to wear the cup when I play player just because I find it gets in the way. But when I am in net, I do add a cup to this combo. That's just my personal preference. And here you can see those Velcro garter sock holder things. I don't even know what, the, what you'd call them. Um, but they're just Velcro holders that'll hold up your sock. So the sock sticks right to it. And then it comes off fairly easily. Now, when you wash this, you want to make sure you close them before you put them in. Otherwise, it's going to get snagged on everything. So that's just where you can slide your cup in. It's usually on the inside so it doesn't come detached and your cup comes out while you're playing. So this is my system. Once again, choose what you feel comfortable in. If you just want to start out cheap, start out cheap um, and just wear, you know, shorts and a t-shirt. So this is the long, uh, it's really stretchy. So you can tell here how stretchy this material is. I usually buy it a size smaller so that I'm sure that it fits snug and I'm not getting caught in it while I'm playing. Uh, it's just long sleeve. It dries really quick. So if you're playing in tournaments, it, you're, not, you're not putting on soap stuff. So t-shirts and cotton will hold moisture, whereas this stuff won't. It'll, it'll wick away and dry pretty quickly. So this is the thin neck guard I was telling you about, the kind that... Right now, I can really only find it uh, attached to the shirt. Uh, so this is just a Kevlar, and you see how thin that is, and it moves really nicely with you on the ice. The thicker ones, um, they work, but they tend to get caught. The next on our list are shin pads. Now, I've had these since I was about 13, um, but make sure you're buying ones that fit. There's basically straps that just come over. The straps, just so you know, they do up usually on the outsides of your legs, so if you're ever wondering... Um, which, which side your shin pads go to, they go to the outside, and the cheapest shin pads I found were $47.99 at Canadian Tire. Next on our list are socks. Now, this is something you can very easily get used. Just make sure they're in good condition. There are no rips or tears. But I did find a pair new from National Sports for $13.99. These are an older style knit sock, and they do have these new ones. They're like a dry fit stretch material. Now just remember, anything that's cotton, including jerseys and your under things, is going to absorb sweat and also uh, wetness from the ice. 
So there's a chance they could weigh you down. If that matters to you, these socks, you know, go out and grab these. But I've gone my entire time playing hockey with the old school knit style socks. So next we've got pants. And these are the pants I was telling you about. The ones I got at Sport Check for five bucks. Um, so the, I mean, pants are one of the most protective pieces of equipment. There's a few different um, options for drawstrings and waistbands and stuff. And you can buy suspenders to help keep them up. Um, but the best pair of pants I found were $49.98 at Hockey Monkey. Um, and they'll do a good job, you know, protecting your legs and, and your bum. And um, usually there's a little bit of spinal protection at the top of them. Um, so, yeah, they've always got usually a waistband that you just cinch down once they're on. And some strings. I keep mine permanently tied. I don't really care about the strings. But there's also different options to do them up. Sometimes there's zippers on the sides for vents too. Next up are skates and they're so important. Please make sure that you're buying skates that fit your foot. Make sure they fit tightly. Make sure you're doing them up tightly. Um, you can buy them used but I don't recommend it. Buy new skates please and bake them. Bake them to your feet. Um, you know, more, mold them to your feet. Break them into your foot so that they fit nicely. You don't need to buy expensive skates. Um, these ones for, for $59.99 from Canadian Tire will do you just fine. I bought, I made the investment, I put down like 500 bucks for these skates, but it's because I play like four or five times a week, and I know I'll be playing for the rest of my life. And so, I made the investment, but when you f first start out, don't make the investment, just get a pair of new skates that are, that are cheap, that fit you right, and make sure you're tightening them up properly and nice and tightly. There's this great little tool called a skate tightener. It's like a little hook. $2.99 Pro Hockey Life. It'll it'll save your fingers. It'll help you out a lot with that. Um, something else you can do to help get your skates tight is buy waxed laces. Buy like the heaviest wax laces you can find. Regular unwaxed laces slip. So you tighten them and they slip down loose again. Um, wax laces, if you find them that are that are nicely waxed, you'll pull them and they'll stay. Um, so just get yourself some wax laces, replace them. I found these ones for $3.99 at National Sports. They're cheap. Keep an extra set in your bag because laces can break. The other thing is please get skate guards. They protect your blades in the bag. They protect your gear from your blades. They protect your hands from your blades. And these ones have a nice terry cloth interior. So they'll soak up anything you don't get with your skate towel, which brings me to this skate towel. Have one, use it. Keep your blades dry after every use before you put them back so they don't rust. Next up are shoulder pads. Now this is a piece of equipment you can really gear towards what your game is. So if you're not playing in a checking league, uh, sometimes you don't even need to wear shoulder pads. Once again, check to make sure. But they can really be as padded or as little padded as you need based on your game. Um, usually there's straps that cover the arm and the ones that come around your midsection to do up front. Those hold them in place. And I found shoulder pads for $39.99 at Source for Sports. And uh, those will be a great option for when you're starting out your first set of brand new equipment that you end up buying. Now, elbow pads are next. Um, these are ones you want to make sure they fit. Otherwise, they're going to keep slipping down your arm and not offer the protection. Uh, usually, there is a soft loop that you can loop around your upper bicep. And then there's another strap that goes around itself over your forearm that holds the, these in place. Um, and the cheapest elbow pads I found were $31.99 from Hockey Monkey. Uh, just uh, make sure that you're putting them on the right side. Usually there's a little tag on the inside that lets you know whether they're for the left or the right side. Helmets. Another thing you need to buy new. If you're buying used, please check for cracks. Um, but I do recommend buying it new. Uh, face masks. Check what your league has decided you need as a face mask. I highly recommend the full face mask. Nobody likes getting a puck to the face. I don't care if it doesn't look cool. I will always, always, always wear a face mask unless I'm doing something where I need to be using a whistle like refing or coaching. So please, please, please make sure you get um, a helmet with a face mask. You can buy them as two pieces or you can buy them as a combo. I found this helmet for $54.99 from Canadian Tire. That is a combo. Um, so that'll make sure your head is protected. You can always scale up your helmet. One of the first things I recommend after skates to scale up to a more expensive version. Gloves are the next thing on the list. 
you can buy these used. These ones that I have are used as well. Um, I found gloves for $39.99 at Canadian Tire. But if you are buying used, please make sure you're checking the palms. You can repalm a glove, but these are the first things to go. And use white stick tape at the top for your butt end of your stick because black eats away at them more frequently. So when you're buying used, just check for holes on those palms. If they're a good deal, um, just get them repalmed. It's usually not that expensive. You can do it at any hockey repair store. When it comes to hockey sticks, things can get real expensive really quickly. So this $18.99 wood stick from Hockey Life is going to be great for you to start with. Yes, wood is less flexible than composite and heavier, but when you upgrade, that new stick is going to feel so light. The next is stick tape. We'll talk about taping a stick at a later date, but stick tape is made of cloth. This stuff is pride tape. It's a rainbow tape um, that goes in the bottom of your stick, the blade of your stick. And I'll link this in the description. Pretty cool stuff. Um, if you want to buy one roll, go with white because you have to do your butt end in white. Um, you can do any color you want on the blade, really. This stuff was $3.99 at Sport Check. Um, you can buy it in large packs, too. Now, the thing is, um, cloth tape is stick tape, and polyflex or plastic tape, this stuff, is sock tape. Um, you can tape your socks in stick tape. You, you can't tape your stick in sock tape. This stuff you just wrap around your shin pads and it kind of just holds everything in place. Co totally optional, $249 at Sport Check. So really you need something to put all of this stuff in. And uh, a hockey bag is kind of like quintessential. Everybody knows, everybody's seen them. Even if you don't know what's inside of them, you know it's gear. Um, so you're going to need a bag to put all this stuff in. And this one is my favorite. I have both the over-the-shoulder bag and this is the backpack bag. I've done wheelie bags in the past. With wheelie bags, make sure you know if what rink you're playing at, if you're playing at the same rink. If they have stairs, a wheelie bag is not your friend. Um, going down, okay, as kids, I mean, we used to just, like, let them go and they just go down the stairs on their own. It was kind of fun. But coming up is terrible because you have to pick it up and those wheels add, add a lot of weight. So um, this is my backpack bag. Oh, I love it. It's got these grommets, so it's got some great ventilation that I can use my uh, fan with. I can do a video on that later if you're interested. It's got lots of pockets, good organization, and those backpack straps really distribute the weight. I have a duffel that I put my goalie stuff in, um, and I do like that bag. It's nice and big, but the, it is a lot more difficult to carry. It's heavier because it's only one strap over one shoulder. Um, but you can start with that. I mean, by all means, start with that. It's not terrible. It's just a little bit more uncomfortable. Um, so this bag for $33.99 is going to work great. So this one's from Hockey Monkey. Uh, and honestly, I have friends who even just use like camping duffels. As long as it fits your gear, go with it. Um, but they do have some fancy bags. So if you want to upgrade, you know, see what's out there. They do have bags called grit bags, and these are basically wheeled bags. Like It's, it's a wheeled locker um, for all of your hockey stuff. So now we're getting into optional items. First on the list are jerseys. Now, check with your league. Sometimes they loan them to you for the season. Sometimes they give them to you. It's included in your registration costs. Sometimes the team you're playing on in the league are going to be buying their jerseys and splitting the cost among the players. So check and make sure if you need a jersey. If you would like a jersey, if you're going to be playing shinny or you just want a jersey of your own, plain practice jersey, $17.99, National Sports, comes in a variety of colors. So just be checking in seeing what you need, seeing what you don't need, and then you can make the decision as to whether or not you would like to purchase this item or not. Um, but I do want to say having a jersey around is definitely a big bonus, especially if you have a light and a dark one. This next item is mainly for organizing my bag. I use this mesh dollar store bag to keep all of my cloth items, so my jersey, my socks, my under things, um, in this, including my shower towel and stuff. So when I get home, I pull it out of my bag. Everything goes in the washing machine, including the bag. When it's dry, everything gets put back in the bag and back into my hockey bag. Having a helmet repair kit in my bag is essential. You can make that decision if it's essential for you, but for me, it's just handy to have everything on hand. There is a good chance someone in your dressing room will have one that you can borrow, but just in case, I like having my own now this comes with a bunch of helmet specific screws in case you lose any. Yes, losing screws in your helmet is quite possible and frequent for me. 
um, and a screwdriver that's specific to hockey helmets. And so this will allow you to add screws, tighten screws, and do adjustments to your helmet because they are adjustable for the most part. This kit also comes with two skate stones of varying grits in order to clean up your edges, um, and we'll talk more about that in a later video. But this kit is $9.99 at Canadian Tire. Uh, it's exactly like this one that I got, um, so I suggest going out and getting one of those. I like to shower after a game, after a practice, whatever. So I keep a towel, a toiletry bag, and a set of flip-flops in my bag to do that. I usually also toss some clean underwear in there, uh, clean outfit if I need it, and clean socks. Oh my god, putting on clean dry socks after a shower, even just after you come off the ice if you don't shower, is amazing. Highly recommend it. So just toss these extra items in your bag. Um, and then when you get there the first date, gauge culture. I mean, do people shower? Do they not? In my league, people shower very frequently. We end up with like five, six people showering. Um, because we usually go out afterwards. So it's nice to get clean after the game. I don't like sitting in my own sweat. And I don't like my feet touching the disgusting locker room floor. So something completely optional. I haven't even added it into the list. But these are hiking socks. And they're anti-blister socks. So if you find you're getting blisters in your skates, which I do in my goalie skates, these are two layers. They rub against each other. Um, and it just helps prevent blisters. Because blisters form when your skin's rubbing against material uh, or your skates. Um, so these will just help prevent blisters. So I wouldn't, re I mean, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying these immediately. Um, but if you find that you are getting bad blisters, go out and get yourself a pair. They sell them at any kind of hiking or mountain store and they're marketed as hiking socks. And another thing to keep in your bag is a little first aid kit. I put this one together you can use it from the dollar store in a little like red bag. Um, but it's a good idea just to have like band-aids on you and alcohol swabs. Um, and maybe a little bit of like polysporin or something along those lines. Just before a game, you end up with a nick or a cut or during a game and you come off the ice. You want to keep it clean. You want to keep it covered. Um, just kind of like a really good addition to your hockey bag. Uh, more than likely, your team's going to have a bigger one on hand. But something handy just if you need a quick band-aid. Something that may or may not be mandatory in your league as a mouth guard uh, I personally don't wear one. I should. I have one made by my dentist, which you can check to see if you have coverage for. But in your league, it might be mandatory. I prefer the ones with straps. That way you can attach it to the cage in your helmet. Just make sure you're putting it back in the case that it came in. Keep that case. That way you've got something to keep your mouth guard in so that it doesn't get all disgusting in your bag. And you can actually clean your mouth guard with either mouthwash or... Or you can treat them as dentures. That's what's recommended is you put them in a denture bath and you brush them as dentures after every use. For me, a water bottle is absolutely essential. If I don't have one on the bench with me, I am lost. And so any kind of bottle with like a valve that lets the water come out when you squeeze it, but not when you turn it upside down is going to be ideal. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a wet bag or you're not going to be able to get your water out. They do make them with spouts, but, uh, you know, it's kind of part of the culture to dose yourself with water with every drink. So this bottle for $2.99 from Pro Hockey Life is going to suit all your needs. You can fill it up. You can At home, you can fill it up at the rink. That's up to you. Just keep one in your bag, either full or not. That way you're sure you've got water with you for your game. Something that I really like to have around is a skate mat. And this just allows my feet to stay dry when I'm taking off my skates. So I just keep my skates off of it, take off my skates, and then I put my feet back on it. This also allows me after my shower to take my flip-flops off and then stand on them at barefoot, which in, unless you've, you've done a change in a shower in a dressing room before with a gross floor, uh, you don't understand how complicated it can be. It is like a maze and a half to try to not touch the floor with bare feet, but get dressed. Also, you don't want to touch the floor in your socks because the floor is wet. So if you have a mat that is clean from home to put over the floor that you don't get wet, trust me, life saver. You don't have to buy this one. You can go to the dollar store, see if you can find something that'll work for you. Uh, but this one for $9.99 from Pro Hockey Life is like a dedicated skate mat for a really good price. So if, if that's if that's your prerogative, if you think a skate mat would help or you'd enjoy one, by all means, head over to Pro Hockey Life and grab that one for $9.99. So stick wax. Some people love it. Some people, meh. 
Some people do not like it at all. It's completely up to you. If you want to try it out and see if you like it or not, or try it without it and see if you think you benefit. Um, it, I mean, it protects your tape job and it also uh, provides a little bit of grip on the puck, like a little bit of extra control. Um, I don't really notice a whole lot of difference as far as puck control goes. I think my hands do that. Thank you. Um, but I do notice that it makes my, my tape job last a whole lot longer. So if you want your tape jobs to last longer, if you hate taping sticks, five ninety nine at Canadian Tire, toss it in your hockey bag. You just need a thin layer over the top of, uh, of your tape job on your stick in order for it to do its thing. So that's completely up to you. Totally 100% optional. Another item that's totally optional are suspenders. This is completely up to your comfort level. Uh, I mean, they do exactly what you think they do. They fit over existing grommets on your pants. I think they're called grommets. They're like buttons, basically. And they hold your pants up. You can wear them under your shoulder pads, over your shoulder pads. Doesn't matter. It's all under your jersey. If you want to wear them over your jersey, as long as the refs don't have a problem with that, you know, whatever. Do your thing. But, I mean, nine ninety nine Canadian Tire... If you want to make sure your pants stay up, or if you're finding they're falling down all the time, go out and get a pair of suspenders. All right, so we're done. We've gone through everything. So let's start looking at total prices. If we go back to the spreadsheet and we look at just the gear, none of the optional items, just what you will absolutely need in order to play, the grand total for everything new is $437.85. So if you want none of the optionals, you just want to get some cheap new gear, that's the total. So that's going to be um, the lowest price that you can get things at Canadian re retailers at full price online. And uh, so yeah, that might have been higher or lower than you expected. But when we add in all of the optional items, that's an extra $86.03. You can, you know, give and take what you want and what you don't want out of that list. But if you want to buy all of the gear and all of the optional items together, your grand total is going to be $523.88. So really $525. And you're going to get all of the optional items. You're going to get all of the gear and you're going to be ready. So just as a reminder, make sure you're checking with your league to see if you need or if they will provide or if it is required to have the items on the screen. This is going to help you a lot to know what you absolutely have to buy and what you don't have to buy. And, you know, you might want to buy it even if you don't need it, but at least you'll know if you absolutely need it so you don't show up to the first game without a jersey or a mouth guard. Now, the one name that kept popping up throughout this entire ordeal, this beast of a project, was Canadian Tire. So if you want to go to one place and get the most bang for your buck as far as hockey equipment goes, it seems like Canadian Tire is your best bet. Now, that doesn't mean you can't shop online and buy from literally everyone on the list. I mean, all the links are included in the spreadsheet you can find down below. But say you want to go in person or something, it seems like Canadian Tire is your best bet. Can you think of anything I forgot? Because if you can, please leave it in the comments down below so that folks who are new to the game can head on down there and check and make sure that there's nothing that I've missed so that they don't miss it. Because like I said, beast of a project. It was, it was, this video took a very, very long time to film and make. Um, and there's so much information here that I could have very easily forgotten something that is essential to maybe your game and you think would help out a newbie. So just let folks know down below. Now I do want to urge you that if this helped you in any way, if you're a beginner to the game or you just really enjoyed this, just subscribe down below and click the notification bell because there's going to be plenty more in this series. And the next video that we're going to be doing is I'm going to be reviewing all of the retailers that I used for this video. So I'm going to be giving you my honest opinions and some stories about my interactions with them. Because let me tell you, being a female in this game trying to buy gear, it's not the easiest thing. And so I want to help you out when you're looking for stuff. And even if you're not female, be an ally. Go to the retailers that have a good track record with, with women in sports because you want to be showing them support. 
I just want to say thank you so much for clicking in the first place and for staying this long. I know this video turned out to be like 40 minutes. It has to. I still haven't edited it together, but it is a beast. But I'm glad. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to share this information with you. And I wish you all the happiest of hockey seasons.